This is the TS-364 from QNAP. A three-bay network attached storage system that promises big performance in a small package with its four-core Celeron, four gigs of DDR4 RAM, 2.5 gig ethernet, M.2 slots for caching, and more. Let's take a look. This is the first QNAP we've had the honor of reviewing here at the channel. That's right, this NAS in classic white is also the first NAS we've tested with 2.5 gig ethernet. That's right, QNAP was kind enough to send us the TS-364 for review and we're gonna check it out. You ready, John? Let's do it. Let's get the outside dimensions and specs out of the way first. The TS-364 measures in at 142 millimeters wide, by 150 millimeters high, by 260 millimeters deep, and weighs in at 3.62 pounds. The first thing you'll notice about the TS-364 is the lack of any visible access to the drives from outside of the unit. More on that in a minute. Its diminutive size, design, and aesthetics communicate that QNAP intends for the user to have this little NAS be seen on your computer desk or next to your media center and not locked away in a cabinet. Up front on the left side, we have system status, LAN, USB, hard disk one through three, and two SSD indicator LEDs. Below the LEDs is a power button and a single USB 3.2 Gen 1 port with a button surrounding it that when pressed triggers the one-touch USB copy functionality, more on that later. Around back we see a 92mm fan, three thumb screws for opening the enclosure, two USB 3.2 Gen 2 USB ports, a single 2.5 gigabit ethernet port, and a single HDMI 1.4 port. To the bottom right we have a single power connector for the 65 watt external power supply. QNAP states that the maximum wattage consumed by the unit fully populated with disks is 32.8 watts. Let's open this system up. Opening the TS-364 is interesting. First, we remove the three thumb screws on the back of the unit and slide the larger half of the housing backward to open it up. We found the easiest way to do so was to lay the NAS on its side, with the port side down and slide the larger shell off. Awkward at first, but once we fully understood the process, it didn't seem too bad. Once opened, we see the drive cage for the three 3.5-inch mechanical drives, each on a removable sled that releases by pinching the edges in and pulling out. These are toolless drive sleds, and they do not support 2.5-inch drives out of the box. However, QNAP does sell sleds that will support smaller form factor mechanical and solid-state drives. Our demo unit came with three 4TB Seagate Iron Wolf NAS drives, which in a RAID 5 array would provide a raw capacity of 8TB total, but the QNAP TS-364 will support most large SATA 3 drives on the market and has a documented maximum pool size of 308TB. Regardless of what you choose, we recommend you buy discs that are NAS rated like the Seagate Iron Wolf drives you see here, which are CMR or conventional magnetic recording discs. With the discs removed, we can get a better look at the main board beneath. The TS-364 comes with a single 4 gig stick of DDR4 2666MHz so dim memory installed. The unit's advertised max memory is 16GB split evenly between the two so dim slots on the main board. We can also see the two M.2 NVMe Gen 3 slots for adding SSDs that are used for caching on the system. The TS-364 is based on the Intel N5105 Celeron processor which is a 4-core, four 4-thread four CPU with a base clock of 2GHz that boosts to 2.9GHz. The N5105 CPU practically sips power at 10 watts of TDP. The QNAP TS-364 retails for $449 and is available right now on Amazon. Let's talk about the user experience of this little NAS. The TS-364, like its competition from Synology, provides a browser-based desktop-like user experience for configuring and managing the unit called QTS. We were pleased to see how well-polished and snappy the UI was when clicking around. Provisioning a storage pool and data volumes was quick and easy with the user interface using the Storage and Snapshot app. If no pools are provisioned, the app will launch a wizard to help you build your first storage pool. When building out a new pool, you'll be walked through choosing disks and RAID types, which in a three disk system like the TS-364 offers you either RAID 1, RAID 5, or JBOD. Like QNAP's competition on the market, you'll find a dedicated app store for installing different applications to extend and enhance the functionality of the NAS. And from looking through the list, we see all of the familiar apps we'd expect to have available like Plex, OwnCloud, and a ton more. We think that having a user-friendly user interface and user experience is a key decision-making point for any NAS buying decision you'd make, and QNAP's QTS system checks that box for us. Another feature to the TS-364 is the hybrid desk station environment. 
Using the HDMI 1.4 port on the back of the NAS, you can turn the unit into a media center PC when connected to a big screen TV and allow you to use a mouse and keyboard to navigate around and run apps designed for this mode. This is what the UI looks like when connected to the HDMI port after installing Hybrid Desk Station. This is a nice feature added for those looking for media center functionality from their NAS and this will likely appeal to certain buyers. We felt the UI could use more polish and better focus and it would be nice to have a dedicated Plex app. Lastly, pressing the button that wraps around the USB 3 port on the front of the unit activates a feature known as OneTouch USB Copy. This feature allows you to configure the system to copy or synchronize the data held on a USB stick or external drive with a directory location within the NAS. Okay, let's get down to business on how well this NAS performs. Our standard test suite uses Crystal Diskmark to run disk read and write tests that test both sequential and random read write across an SMB network share. Let's take a look at the results. This is a bit of an eye chart, so let's talk about the average results for all tests first, and then we'll put the full results up again so you can pause the video for yourself to get a deeper look into the details. All four of our test groups were tested against 13 different test file sizes. For reference, Q-depth is the number of I.O. operations that can run in parallel on a device at a given time. The higher the Q-depth, the more disk operations that can be executed leading to better performance. The single thread refers to how many CPU threads were used to process the transfers. Let's start in the top left with the first sequential test, the one megabyte block test with a Q-depth of eight and a thread of one. In the first test, the QNAP TS364 performed impressively with an average read speed of 295.84 megabytes a second and a write average of 272.95 megabytes a second. These are great numbers, especially for an array with just three mechanical disks inside. Next stop, top right, the sequential one megabyte block test with a Q depth of one and a thread of one. This test also produced very impressive results with an average read speed of 281.37 megabytes per second and an average write speed of 258.71 megabytes a second. This test is considered the worst case sequential read write test and the results were awesome. Now down to the bottom left and our first four kilobyte block random test. Random tests are much different from the sequential tests as they do not read and write data in order, but from random areas of the disk. In mechanical drive-based NASes like the TS364 without SSD caching, the results are typically lower due to the seek time of the mechanical hard disk in the system. That being said, however, the TS364 produced some impressive results in the first random test with a read speed of 128.85 megabytes a second and a write speed of 98.24 megabytes a second. And lastly, our final test that is also the worst case scenario performance test for mechanical hard disk drives, the random four kilobyte block with a Q depth of one and a thread of one. In this test, the average read speed was 20.19 megabytes a second and the write speed was 13.75 megabytes a second. While these numbers seem low, keep in mind that this test reflects the hardest work mechanical drives in a NAS can do. Overall, these numbers are fantastic. Here are the raw results again for you to take a moment to view. Feel free to pause the video and if you run into any questions, drop them in the comments below. We made it to the end of the video, which means we have time with Richard to talk about this. Time to talk. You got a lot of hands-on time with this. I did spend a lot of time with this thing. And, uh, you know, as far as the hardware is concerned, it was very impressed. You know, it 2.5 gigabit network, and it was able to, it couldn't saturate it, but it was, you know, we were close to saturation. Mm -hmm. And honestly, saturation is one of those things that, you know, doesn't happen in real life anyway. And our test showed that this thing was up there. It was really, really, really close to pushing 300 megabytes a second. And that's impressive. Yeah. So, I mean, you're impressed with it, but let's go over like hardware. what do you think of the build construction? You know, when we first got it, you know, when we were, we were doing the B-roll, we were trying to figure out how it comes apart. Yeah. I mean, it just took a minute and it yeah. felt a little weird. It was weird to think about having a device that doesn't have the hard drives right there available in the front. Yeah. But, you know, honestly, I think that they have designed this box to be something that you actually put out someplace for people to see, like in a media center if you want to use their media center stuff, or at your desk. No, like, that's exactly what I thought. Like when we were taking it apart, it kind of changed my perspective of what it was, like mm -hmm. who it was marketed towards. So, yeah, I mean, if if you lose a hard drive, uh, it's it's more of an effort, right, to take it apart. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, you know, once you learn how to to do it, it's fine. And I I, I kind of like the fact that it's it's more polished and less um, data center-like. How about yeah. that? All right, fair enough. Uh, how about the UI? 
this is the first time we played with uh, with a UI that uh, for from QNAP. Um, and you know we're used to Synology. That's 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 our, our comparison here, right? Because we've got Synology. Synology's got that nice web-based GUI, and this thing, very impressed. Like it's snappy. It's it's uh, easy to use, user friendly. Um, mm -hmm. The user experience was great. So yeah, I think that they've done a good job. And uh, and it's if someone was to buy it and they're coming from a Synology background, they'll have no problems getting used to it, right? It's it's. Things are in slightly different places, but it's all there, and uh, it's got all the apps that you want. So for people who are loading apps on their NASes, it's all there. All right, awesome. Okay, let's just get to the elephant in the room. Okay. You know what I'm going to ask. Yeah, I do. Okay. <laughs> so let's just get going about how concerned should you be at looking at buying what appears to be a good value, but security-wise, is it still something that you should throw your money at? Right, and you're speaking specifically because there's been a lot of a lot of hay made about the the vulnerabilities and security vulnerabilities specifically that QNAP devices have been subject to, mm -hmm. and I mean security is super important. We're not going to argue about like the necessity to patch things and patch frequently and keep things up to date because if you don't, you're putting yourself at risk. Then the time that we had this thing and we were testing it, playing with it, I think I had like two um, patches for the firmware on it, mm -hmm. and. Patches get installed automatically, right? And it was a seamless process. And it, you know, there's there's always going to be risk in everything. Whether you have a Synology or you have a QNAP or you have anything, and protecting it is important. And um, I think that that from what I've seen here, that the QNAP's obviously taking security more seriously. When we first fired it up, for example, the first thing it said was, "Hey, there's an OS update. You need to install this." Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like, oh yeah, get to that when you get time, don't worry about it. And no, it was like, no, you do this, do it right now. And yeah. so I think that that was a, uh, you know, a good indicator of how serious they have become about security. Okay, awesome. Well, thanks for joining me today, Rich. <laughs> Thank you, John. Yeah, uh, you know, feel free to join me on Discord. I would love to join you on our Discord. There's a link right here. All right. <laughs> There are so many choices out there for whole NASAs, it's hard to know which one is best for you. But fear not, check out our playlist here if you're looking for storage and we can help you find it.